Good morning. Today is the first day of February in this 2024th year of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it looks like there's a beautiful day shaping up outside. I believe the temperatures are a bit warmer. The skies are blue and clear. The sun is bright and shining, and uh, we're thankful for that blessing. I hope uh, whatever you have going this day will be a pleasant one. Uh, and we don't have much on our plate today, so uh, we'll see how it evolves. I think there's some grocery shopping involved in it. Uh, so enjoy your day, and uh, may God's blessings be with each of you. Uh, today I thought I'd turn to a little book I found uh, by Martin E. Marty. Martin uh, was uh, one of the greater theologians of the Lutheran faith. He wrote uh, profusely, and one of the books he wrote is this fun little book I found called Lutheran Questions, Lutheran Answers. And the text I turn today to today is addressing the question as follows. What do we mean when we say the Bible is God's word? Lutherans yield to no others when it comes to celebrating the word, God's word, Christ as the word of God, and along with all these, the Bible as God's word. Ever since the beginning of Lutheranism, Lutherans have stood in awe of the fact that everything begins with the Word of God, and that while the mountains and worlds may cease, the Word of the Lord endures forever. There may be hundreds of thousands of billions of galaxies, each of them loaded with hundreds of thousands of billions of stars, but as far as humans are concerned, Everything is chaotic and meaningless and silent until, as in Genesis 1, God speaks, God says something, and that is a startling thought that deserves reflection. Just as the activity of God throughout the Bible is identified with breaking silence, with speaking, with the Word, so the clearest address to each of us and all of us arrives when beyond the chaos and creation of nature, Jesus appears as the Word, the Logos, which is an interesting way of speaking about a human. Jesus does not just speak words. He is the Word, the connecting link with God, the ought to be enough. We believe, however, that God gives us more and that more is written on scrolls or printed in books. Hollywood producer Sam Goldwyn, known for malpropisms and boners, once snorted, an oral agreement isn't worth the paper it's printed on. He mangled his concept, but we know what he was getting at. In our contract, an oral agreement between God and Abraham or Noah or Israel or the disciples could have been forgotten or passed along inaccurately. The Bible is a kind of written agreement or, in its own terms, a covenant. That form makes us more sure of how God acts and what God says. Martin Luther sometimes seems to give the printed word in the Bible secondary status. He liked the living word and said in a German pun that the word of God is more to be shouted than written. But the spoken, living, shouted word for Luther always derives from and relates to the word in the Bible, or the Bible as word. Lutherans are nervous about any language that says the Bible contains the word of God, making it a vessel and not the stuff that matters. The purpose of the Old Testament, the scriptures that Jesus had studied as a Jew, was to be searched because in these scriptures we have eternal life. Yet we find this only when we find him. In the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 31, the purpose is clear. 
these signs are written so that we may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing we may have life in his name. And let us pray. You have given to us a holy trust, O Lord, your living word in Jesus Christ, the word that became flesh, your word spoken at creation that brought into being our life and being. Help us to cherish your word, O oh Lord, to read it, to study it, to imprint it upon our very lives, our very hearts, and that it might transform us into that which you have created us to be, your servants, the people of your word, of your creating. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the gift of Scripture as it informs our lives, as it shares that story of your redemption of humanity in its brokenness. We thank you for your word that reveals the very ethic for our life, our being, our living. We thank you, O oh Lord, for that word which gives us hope for the tomorrows which are forever for us who would believe. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your precious word that guides our pathways each day in the things that we might say and the things that we might do, all for the purpose of helping this world become a better place. Strengthen us, O Lord, in our journey to understand your word, your will, and your way for us. Bless this world that cries out for your help, for your presence, for your strength and your guidance. Might we cling to those things that you have taught us from past and learn from them? Might we make peace in our hearts and in our lives one with another, bring a more perfect peace to dwell in the land we call holy between Gaza and Israel, between the various Palestinian states, still the rattlings of war that threaten your land and this world, bringing in to terrorism, those things that take the life from others in such tragic ways and the unfortunate responses that follow. Bring your peace to bear in the Ukraine. Send home those Russian aggressors that they might embrace their own lives in their own place and bring renewal and restoration to the Ukrainian nation. And grant help and hope and healing to all for whom we intercede this day, for Nikki and for Tom, for Magnolia, for Julia and Katie, for Evelyn Rag and Evelyn Tompkins, for Mark and Katie, for Donna, for Judy, Elaine, for Nancy, Roger, and Hunter, for Gail and Charlotte, for Jenny, for Linda, for Jocelyn, for all others for whom we would seek your help, your hope, and your guiding presence and strength. For into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Go in peace to love and serve the Lord this day and forevermore. Amen.